Hello you people of the tube, welcome to my six string journey. On this channel I'm documenting my journey learning to play the electric guitar, my highs, my lows, gear reviews and lesson reviews. And today I'm going to be talking about my last lesson, which was lesson 36, which I undertook on the 28th of April 2021. It was a face to face lesson, which was good. And overall, the lesson went well, but it didn't and I'm going to explain that in this video and it probably went as well as the last practice lesson that I did just a couple of minutes ago and that's why the guitar is staying in the box and I'm not playing on this particular video. Um, I have a couple of videos planned where I will be playing the guitar a lot more so one is a practice session that some of you have been asking me to record what I'm doing in my latest practice sessions and also I owe you a video on the song that I'm working on at the moment. So those two are going to follow. I was going to do those today, but I'm not now because my hands and my legs are hurting quite a bit with the change in the weather. So once the weather settles down and my hands settle down, hopefully things will come better. So I've been working on this new song. I'm not going to just talk too much more about that right now. And I thought things were going pretty well until the lesson. Now the lesson was pretty good. It was a face-to-face -face lesson and it was the start of my improvisation journey. So I was really up for it, really excited, been working really hard, uh, set the guitar up and started with the pentatonic scales which went pretty well and then I ran through the new song that I'm working on and that again I thought went pretty well. Normally when I sit down in front of Michael, one or two things go wrong, um, but it, it went okay. I've been practicing and that was good. Until such time as Michael picked up the guitar and he started to play along with me. He likes the tune as well. And he started to play along with me. And then the problems started to come in. And unfortunately, an old gremlin of mine has well and truly come back to haunt me. And this goes back over 30 years to when I was at school. And when I was learning to play the clarinet, everything was done by ear. And nobody sort of really cared. The music teachers didn't really care that much. Um, I was in the orchestra and they didn't really care that much because, you know, so many people around me were, were playing and covering up what I was doing. But what I used to do is I would grab the music sheet and I would follow along the notes but that was all I used to do was follow along the notes I never used to worry too much about the duration of the notes and all of the the tempo and the rhythm was done by ear so either I knew the piece or I would listen to it memorize how the piece went and then I would play that by ear and as I said, for all the times that I played, probably three or four years when I was at school, nobody ever picked up what I was doing. And I never really learnt to read the durations and to play things properly from, from sight, in other words, sight reading. So now that we've moved to a much more technical piece, which is the piece of music I'm playing, things have got really really hard and obviously Michael has picked up on the fact that I need to work on the rhythm side of things and playing things correctly because with improvisation if I'm going to be working to a backing track I've got to keep with the rhythm I've got to come in at the right times I've got to finish phrases at the right times and 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 things like that so most of this lesson was given over to that. It was rhythm and working through that. In addition, if you are looking to jam along with other people, then rhythm and being able to keep time is all important. Now I'm gonna to want to play to backing tracks and not necessarily backing tracks that I've created. There may well be other people's backing tracks um, that I want to you know, improvise over. So I'm going to need to learn to play more, a little bit more technically and a little bit more to the rhythm and the tempo rather than just trying to do things by, by ear. So most of the lesson was given over to fixing the problem. 
and it was quite interesting because I've learnt pretty much most of the page but we went right the way back to basics just to looking at the first bar and then the first two bars and then there's a piece where there is a rest for a bar on a bit and that was where I was coming unstuck is I was never coming in at the right time and in addition on the first bar you've basically got a rest for one beat and then you come in towards the end of the second beat it isn't even on the second beat it's towards the end of the second beat so we've really taken things back to one bar at a time and back to this chunking thing which is another video that I, I owe you and I will be getting to that very soon but we, we broke it down into indi each individual bar but what was really interesting was Michael taught me to break the bar down initially into whole beats so basically there's four beats in this bar so we were taking the groups of notes and ringing them for each beat so that you can see how the bar is broken down and then we went a little bit further because Michael taught me to take the smallest note duration now this isn't a great piece of music to to do this against um, because within the piece we've got 16th and 32nd notes in there and they're quite difficult to cope with when you're actually breaking things down so I'm probably going to practice this on easier pieces, but for the moment, because we're working on this particular song, I've tried to, to do this, to break it down. And then underneath all of the notes, it's one, eh, and, eh, and then two, eh, and, ah, uh, and then three, and, and just trying to break it down. So when I'm playing, I can call out and make sure that I'm playing the rhythm and playing the notes at the right time. So getting a lot more technical than just feeling the music which is what I've done in the past. Now I was going to put a diagram up on the screen for you but I'm not going to because I'm not 100% sure that I've got it right and I want to run it past Michael in the next lesson just to make sure. Um, I don't really want to be putting stuff up on the channel that might be there or thereabouts. If I share anything with you I want to make sure that, that it's right. But using this little method I have started to come in at the right time in one or two of the places and really interestingly it's taken a little bit of time and it certainly took a few minutes within the lesson to be coming in at the right time with Michael but over the last couple of days of putting this method into practice just over the first four or five bars I'm now actually able to play that along with the backing track which has been really, really, really good. But this is a technique that I am finding really, really, really hard. It's alien to me. It's something that I'm gonna to need to work on quite extensively. And it has almost taken me a little bit back to basics. So I need to be disciplined. I need to go back to basics, but I am definitely finding it easier to play tracks or you know with with the um, with the Fender Mustang micro on my phone with the backing track to be able to play along to those these techniques are definitely definitely worthwhile and I think that they're going to pay dividends in the long run despite the pain and frustration that I'm going to go through now whilst I get that discipline and habit ingrained in my brain um, it's something that's quite alien and you know I've been playing for a while now just by ear a lot of the riffs that I've been doing have been by ear a lot of the play alongs I've been doing just by ear and I've got away with those but if you were to listen to those carefully you will see that I'm not coming in necessarily at the right time and if I want to play with somebody else or you know have a backing track where things are in sync and working together then this is something that I'm quite clearly going to need to work on and yeah that's going to be the main part of what I'm doing right now as well as working on the scales working on the chords and working on this piece rather than racing through it and being able to play it 
I'm just reining it in, coming back a little bit, and just going to work on just small phrases using this chunking method until I can make sure that I'm coming in at the right time and the notes are being played at the right time, etc. Now, I must admit there are parts of the tune that I'm changing. And again, Michael and I discussed that because there's one particular phrase where I'm actually dropping a note. Michael was playing it, I wasn't. And that's fine to drop the notes and to do what I'm doing because I like what I'm doing. But as he said, you've got to make sure that you begin that phrase and you end that phrase at the same time as the original so that you don't lose the, the flavour and the sound of the original track. So you can't deviate too much from where it is. It still needs to be recognisable. So I'm having to think about the duration of the notes that I'm putting in or that I'm taking out. So, you know, if I've got two notes for the count of two beats and I'm going to be removing one, so you've got two notes with one beat and one beat. If I'm going to drop one of those notes, then I need to make sure that I hold my notes or one of the two, one of the notes either side um, for those two beats so that the duration stays the same. It sounds a bit complicated, but I fully understood and took on board what Michael was saying. And once I did that, then I did find that I could play along with the backing track a little bit better and a little bit closer than I was beforehand. And a lot of this came out because at the beginning of the lesson, when I played the piece, Michael said, have you been playing with a backing track? And I said, well, yes, but it doesn't sound quite right and it's not great. He knew exactly, he knew straight away what I was doing. I just knew he knew what I was doing and he picked up on it immediately. And like I said, that's what we spent most of this particular lesson addressing. And I think if you're starting out on your journey, then get yourself a, a metronome. I use a wearable one at the moment because uh, I just find that easier because the, the click is difficult. Although I still prefer to play along to a drum machine or a backing track, I, I find that a lot easier than I do a hard metronome. But try and play along to some sort of guide, preferably a metronome, from the earliest opportunity and try and get that ingrained in particular if you want to go on to jam with other people or to play along with backing tracks. Um, obviously, in a real life situation, some people are, are slightly ahead and some people are slightly behind the beat. I learned that from a book I was reading recently and that made me feel just a little bit better. And obviously, when I'm improvising, I'm going to be more happy just to feel the music and feel how we're going along. So I won't worry too much if I'm not bang on the beat. But what Michael is working on with me at the moment is definitely, definitely, definitely going to be a good technique to learn. And as I said, I would recommend if you're starting out on your guitar journey, that that's something that you should probably look at as well. So. That was my lesson of the 28th of April, uh, lesson 36. We are back face to face, which is really good. So I'm really looking forward to motoring on now with this improvisation route. And I'm just catching up on a little bit of music theory now. Um, I've finally found a book that is starting to make more sense. Uh, for me, it's um, from absolute beginner to expert. I don't know if it's gonna make me an expert, but that's just some light reading and I'm just going to catch up on a few pages before I start work and try and forget that practice session, which was yeah, not the greatest in the world. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's really nice to know that people are appreciating these videos. I'm getting some really nice comments at the moment on the content on the channel what I'm covering, the types of topics and following along on the journey. And if you would like to receive notifications of future videos, please smash that subscribe button. It's really, really appreciated. And I value all the subscribers and everybody that follows along and that continues to give me motivation to keep 
pressing on with probably the hardest thing I've ever, ever tried to do in my 50 odd years. Playing the guitar, I thought was gonna be a lot easier than it is. It really is one of the hardest things, but also one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done. So please follow along, and in the meantime, I'll see you on the next video coming very soon. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well. Bye-bye.